so, um, so we've gone over the basic premise of the arm triangle. Now, we're going to deconstruct this a little bit because there's a pretty obvious way that the arm triangle can fail even if I lock everything up, right? So if I get you down, please. And yeah, let's get your head facing the camera. Uh, so face piece, yep. Face piece. Face, so, back to the, back to the so if I have this arm triangle, right, the one thing that's going to give him relief in this position, in this control, is space between his elbow and his head. So if he widens this gap, there is no arm triangle anymore, right? My choke, guys, with the arm triangle is the bicep pressing against the carotid artery on this side and my elbow pressing against the carotid artery on this side and compressing it, right? So whether it be early in the process, smooth right here, and he starts pressing that elbow against my ear, that's a very natural response. And if I haven't, like, here's the thing, loosen up, if I can get this to happen, please press that elbow away, it's not going to matter. But early in the process, if he gets that space, it can matter. So, I mentioned earlier that I was going to focus more on the shoulder positioning in this second technique, right? What we're going to do, if he does that, is we're going to either finish or at very least threaten him with what's known as a von Kluge choke. Now, a von Kluge choke traditionally is a counter to a guillotine where they make a stupid mistake of when you pass a side control against a guillotine, holding on to it. So if you were to grab my neck in a guillotine with your left arm, and I got here, I kept here, and I squeeze and I choke. Pretty stupid, simple choke. But we can facilitate that from the same situation. I'll start that. So I have my arm triangle, right? So he's pressing that elbow against my ear. So guys, if he is pressing me this way, look at the direction he's driving me. He's driving me in the same direction my shoulder went for that shoulder pressure and subsequently for that Von flu. So, if we're here, he's pressing that thing against me. I'm going to shift my shoulder down in face, switch my hips a little so I'm kind of turned, and I'm pulling my hands in while I drive my shoulder into his neck. If I have to, I can shift down more to get under his carotid artery, but ultimately the point is, is to take my shoulder and smash into his carotid artery. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Yeah? So, I can also, well, we'll get that in a second. Now, if he presses his elbow against me, it pushes me in this direction, right? You understand that? Well, guys, if, let's say we get this arm out of the way for a second. If my shoulder is going this way into his neck, what's the direction that relieves it? Right. Let's go back. Let's get that arm back. So I have that pressure. Please pull that shoulder off of me, like, the, for the, like pull that bomb through choke off of you, the way you just did. Thank you. If he defends the Von Flu choke, he defends it in the direction of the arm triangle, and if he defends the arm triangle, he defends it in the direction of the Von Flu choke. These are interlocking, like interchanging maneuvers. So this starts to get really new, uh, pretty nasty when I get my positioning, right? I get this arm out of the way. Okay, he starts defending the arm triangle, so I'm shifting down, I'm putting this pressure to defend. I'm here, he defends the arm triangle again. I'm here, right. That starts to suck pretty bad, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, all I'm doing here, guys, is inter exchanging between this and this. These two motions shoulder driving forward and in, head driving up and over. I can also do this thing, you know, if I've already passed over. It's not quite as ruthless for the body food choke, but it's enough to get them to react. So I'm here, right, I move my head to the mat, palm like a hip, windshield wiper over, and then let's say I got loose, so he starts pressing that elbow wide, I can drive that shoulder in. Yeah. Sometimes that just smashes their face, but sometimes it also gets right on the neck, so it just sort of depends on the situation. But trust me when I tell you, if I start smashing this shoulder into his face like this, he's going to pull that out shoulder back, and he's going to tighten up my arm triangle. It's like every time. And you can ask John what kind of happens in there is you're getting choked a little, and then a little, and a little, and a little, and a little. You're kind of never not getting choked. So when the thing finally sinks, whichever one fully sinks in, it's like you had to tap pretty much immediately, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're kind of low level getting choked for a while. The next year, flips up too. Yeah, it's, it's not uh, it's not super pleasant. Alex, grab me. You see that, John? So again, side control, head face control, please. So the first thing is, I'm in side control. I have the head control. I got this arm out of the way. Again. His logical instinct is going to be to press his elbow wide and open that space, right? Instead of like over, because remember I blocked that by doing this. 
Think about it just like pressing it out sideways. Like, yeah, exactly, to open this, like, this way, to open the space. Exactly. You see how now I can't arm triangle. So we go back. So if he does that, go ahead. I'm shifting my shoulder down so it gets under his jawline, pulling my hands in, turning my hips, and smashing my shoulder in. Right? So as I'm doing this, boom. I'm smashing. He pulls the shoulder. So you pull that shoulder off your chin. My head comes over. I have my arm triangle. If he does widen the elbow from here, same principle, smash. Just back and forth, guys. Okay? How you feeling? Good. Yeah. Does that make sense, guys? Excellent. How are we doing on time? Got time. Got time. I am the master of time! Thank you. Yes, yes. Unsolicited. Cool. All right, guys. Let's part it up work it out. One, two, three!